Just like any media, video games come in all kinds of forms, ideas, and inspirations. We gamers will even break them down into specific subgenres based on many things, like greatest of all time, cult classics, brutally hard, or just whatever we decide. Gaming just brings us more and more variety as time goes on, and during this process, there has been the random, odd, and weird game that has come out. Some games are weird based on the gameplay concept, some on the convoluted plot and writing, and some based on just a strange idea. Then there are the games that seem to focus on plain goofiness. The idea of these games leads me to this vid. I played an arcade game last year that I've just been waiting to talk about, and since I've recently been adding Fightcade back to my gaming rotation again, I felt now was a good time to talk about it. And this is a spoiler warning, in order to fully portray the zaniness of this video's game, I'm gonna have to show some spoilers. So no more foreplay, let's dive into a game called Asian Dynamite and find out just how batshit it is. Reports have come in that several terrorist attacks have struck numerous Asian countries simultaneously. An embassy was attacked and during the commotion, the president's daughter, who had been visiting, was apparently kidnapped. The capital city's tower building has occupied by terrorist forces. Wait, has occupied? Huh, okay. Has occupied by terrorist forces. And a military ship transporting missiles has turned up missing. The terrorists have identified themselves as the Asian Dusk and have demanded a large ransom. In a nutshell, terrorists got missiles and the president's daughter, so you gotta lay siege to a tower, stopping any missile launches and rescue the girl. Hmm. Going through a large city tower fighting against terrorists. This kind of sounds familiar. Anyway, in the intro screen we are shown what appears to be the villain, and is it me or does this look like an evil version of Doc Brown from Back to the Future Part 2? Our heroes are Bruno Dellinger, Caroline Powell, and Jennifer Genuine, which I'm sure is totally not her porn name. Now it's not told who these people are exactly, so I'm just assuming they're either cops, Interpol, or something like that. But you choose your character and get a selection of three missions to choose from, which are all different ways to start the game. I'll jump ahead and get this out of the way right now. The game is slightly different depending on which scenario you choose. The changes though are just some different stages and different mid-bosses, but each scenario does have its own unique ending. For an arcade game, this is a great idea. Even though the differences aren't large, having variety in an arcade game is always an awesome idea. Say this game was in an arcade you go to. You play it and beat it. Then you come back a couple weeks later and you want to play it again, it's at least going to be somewhat different. So it gives the cabinet an extra level of replay value. Now this is just a hypothetical situation, as this game sadly only came out in arcades in Japan. Okay, we got our character and mission picked, and we hop into the action. Asian Dynamite is a 3D beat-em-up with a very simple three-button system. There's a punch button, kick button, and jump button. Punches and kicks can be comboed when hitting the buttons in succession, and you can perform jump attacks with them as well. There's also a throw mechanic where you can walk up to dudes and grapple, or pick them up off the ground, but I wasn't 100% sure how I was actually doing it. I'm just assuming it's like a 2D beat-em-up where you just get close and hit a button. There are weapons scattered throughout each level that can be used, kind of like in Power Stone. You got guns, swords, clubs, lots of variety, a hydrogen bomb. The levels are just one screen, not a long continuous stage like you'd see in Final Fight or Golden Axe. Beat all the enemies on the screen and you continue to the next level. And you know what? The look of this game in this system is really reminding me of something. Like, I feel like I've seen this game before. Anyway, on the surface, the game seems pretty simple and standard for a 3D beat-em-up. Until you pick up a briefcase and things get a little nuts. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Did I just transform? Is this Power Rangers? Who is this person? Who's Zhang Shi? Why is she hopping around, arms out like Frankenstein's monster? Look at these attack animations! Wait. Now I'm some temple priestess named Kiku Hime, and I just whipped out some bells to hit foes with? Are these boxing gloves, or like little lines you see on Chinese New Year? Yo, now I'm the gun kata lady? Yeah. 
Yeah, so each character has three personas they can turn into that changes their attack animations. Bruno can digivolve into Skullmaster, which is basically the Punisher, King Khan, which looks like some racist ass pro wrestler, and Blue Lee? Some Bruce Lee knockoff is in this game? Dude looks like he should be in Kung Pao Enter the Fist. Meanwhile, Jennifer Genuine morphs into Mandala, which I think is a Hindu or Buddhist reference. Some dominatrix named Bloody Shears, which looks almost damn close to Voldo from Soul Calibur. And, uh, Knights from Knights into Dreams? Nah, it's Tricky Clown, also known as Pure Nightmare Fuel. So the concept of different personas with different styles is a cool idea, but why they are what they are, I have no clue. Blue Lee comes with a small table, which totally reminds me of the dude in The Young Master. The attacks are awesome, and the animations seem to mimic the kind of choreographed style you'd see in a kung fu movie. He's definitely my favorite Bruno persona. Caroline's gun master form is just dope as hell. As I said before, it's just gun kata. She even uses them as melee weapons when you run out of ammo. And even though Tricky Clown is creepy as fuck, it is Jennifer Genuine's best form. She uses throwing cards that have infinite ammo, and for some reason they still sound like a gunshot. The control and combat in the game is simple, but the personas make it fun and funny. It could be a little annoying when you sometimes have to reposition yourself and basically turn, but aside from that, the game plays fine. And I love the Persona throw animations. They are over the top and wild, which is just a joy to watch. You'll find that there isn't a large number of enemies, but a lot of them take many, many hits to defeat, which is a good idea to balance every, whoa, hold up. What the fuck did, what? What the fuck did I just see? Did you all see that? Let's see that again. Yo, I'm telling you, this chick is nightmare fuel. Her throw animation is putting on some ghoulish mask and scaring the shit out of her opponents. Then she fucking laughs at them. I mean, I've never seen that before, so it's original, but still horrifying. Outside of basic combat, sometimes there are these little quick time event mini games between stages. In some scenarios, you have to hit the correct input, other times you gotta play rock, paper, scissors, and they can be annoying sometimes because the amount of time you get is so small, you don't even know what's happening. So you just hit a button and pray it's right. Though there doesn't seem to be any consequence for being wrong, except I'm assuming maybe you get less points or lose some life, I'm not sure. And I'm telling you, I've seen something like this in another game. Holy crap, what game was it? Welcome to the party, pal! That's right! Fucking Die Hard the Arcade game! This game is like a duplicate of Die Hard Arcade. But why? I mean, both were developed by Sega, so that's a link. But what does John McClane have to do with law enforcement fighting and cosplay? Well, I looked it up and found some interesting information on Wikipedia. So yes, Sega made the Die Hard Arcade game, but they didn't have the rights to the film in Japan, so the game was called Dynamite Decca, and everything Die Hard related was taken out of the game. So a sequel to the Japanese version was made, Dynamite Decca 2, or known here in the States as Dynamite Cup. Then another sequel was made, Dynamite Decca EX Asian Dynamite, and that is how we get to the game you see before you. Playing this game, I just thought it was a diehard knockoff, or Sega just recycling the same combat system, which it kinda is. I didn't think it would have actual connections to Die Hard itself though, and also the fact that this technically makes it the third game in a trilogy. I mean, what a wild turn, and the game immediately gets more love from me, because it has something to do with Die Hard, because I fucking love those movies. So the tie to Die Hard was pretty surprising. The personas are a wacky idea. Let's move on to our enemy selection. You got standard goons, dudes in suits, construction workers, your basic jobbers, right? But where we see the strangeness drip in is in some of these boss battles. Each mission has a different set of mid-bosses. Some have the same boss, but with the same moves, oddly, but different skins. There's Sergeant Kilgore, who looks like some overweight Australian militia dude. G. Daimon, who appears to be some big old Yakuza motherfucker. And of course, the mightiest of them all, Costume Actor, which is a giant panda bear. A giant panda bear that chucks dynamite. A giant 
dynamite chucking panda bear that does this to you. That's got to hurt. I don't care where you're from. What a crazy ass idea. Ain't nothing gonna be better than the giant panda. I mean, they'd have to go real big to top that. What? Is, is that... Is, is that a Kraken? A goddamn Kraken? And he's Kraken the second! He's a second in the line of city tower dwelling Krakens that just chill out in a control room. Seriously, I just finished the last stage, ran up some stairs, boom, fucking Kraken fight. And I know what you're thinking. It can't get wilder than this, right? How about the variant boss fight in the other missions? Which is a giant stone statue named Cultural Heritage. That's right, you're getting your ass kicked by culture itself. I think the boss selection is just so out of left field and wonderful. It makes the game so unpredictable, you never know what's coming in the next room. When you discover a new foe, you immediately proclaim, what the fuck, and then laugh and smile. That's what this game does for me. It entertains the shit out of me, it makes me laugh my ass off. I'm just having nothing but fun playing it. And the weirdness does not end. The game also has fast cutscenes that go by so quick with all these sharp cuts, you can't help but just start laughing. Like, every time we see not Doc Brown here, he's always shouting with the scene ending on some weird-ass facial expression. This shit cracks me up so bad. He just, like, zones out and is all... I'm legit playing a B action movie. It's fantastic. And when you finally fight this dude, he's randomly just a cyborg. How? Why? His name is Wolf Hongo? Do I need to play Dynamite Cop to find out what led to this? I'm just so engrossed and confused that I must know. As I said before, each mission has its own ending. After beating up evil cyborg Doc Brown, he tries to launch a missile, but is thwarted by the president's daughter who randomly knows how to disarm what appears to be a nuclear weapon with a laptop. How does she know how to do that? How am I so in the weeds with Asian dynamite? Oh my god, the Kraken is back! He's taking Robo Doc Brown to the moon on the missile! Where can I get the drugs the developers were on when they made this game? Asian Dynamite is nothing but back-to-back -back WTF moments and layers of insanity. It's so random. It's like dartboard logic. And you know what? I kind of love it. It's so entertaining and funny. And with the brilliance of Fightcade, you can also share this awesome experience with a friend and play co-op. When I first played this game, I did play it with one of my friends, and we had a blast and laughed the whole damn time. It's definitely a weird-ass acid trip worth experiencing. Have you played Asian Dynamite? What did you think of it? Know of any weird-ass games I should play? Feel free to share them. Thank you for watching.